Okay, now we're on the gantry, the x-axis. I'll bring it over here so we can look at it a little bit better. Take it over there, out of the way. All right, it's kind of the same thing as the uh, Y axis, these rails I was telling you about. You know how I, I locked just the one down over there and left this one loose and then ran the gantry back and forth. And that's what made the second side parallel. And as I locked it down slowly, a little bit at a time, it just locked itself into the right place. Do the same thing on these rails. Now, as a reminder, I have two rails below and a third one up here. Or two in front and a third one back there, whatever your perspective is. So, you have to... What did I do? I think I, I did the one where I, I assembled this plate and before I even assemble this, but this is this. These are two pieces of uh, um, bamboo flooring, and of course, by themselves, they're not that rigid, but they are hardwood. And then these here act as splints, though, and keep it from bending. So I'm, I'm very pleased with the rigidity of it. It's there's no problem with that. Anyway, I uh, got off the topic. Oh, yeah. So I had this one one off the table before I even assembled anything. And had this assembled. And then run it back and forth. Lock, lock the one down. And then lock the, you know, screw the other one down. And lock it down little by little. And then it's parallel. And then you do the same thing once you assemble the Z box somewhat and you get the top one up there you, this one's still loose then you can run back and forth and tighten them a little bit at a time until this comes in the way, the way it should be I think for the most part it pretty well I mean I had these pre-drilled so it pretty well worked out it, it, just the way I had it planned it's, it's um, I did the I did the layout on a CNC and everything lined up very well without any any fighting or anything. But that's I don't know what else is there with that. Like I said, I'm pretty happy with it. Something I didn't mention in the other video about the the Y axis is these ball screws. You gotta they come in different grades. And these are C7, hardened C7, and they come in, and they um, with, sometimes the threads are not as clean as they should be. You'll have to make sure there's no no burrs in it, no cross threads. Uh, the mating surfaces, you know, these are bearings in here. You got to make sure that uh, that slides in there without you don't. If you're having to tap stuff in, you're doing something wrong. There should be no effort other than just getting it lined up perfectly straight to get it on. Uh, another thing I did was I, I filed a flat on, the, on this shaft as, as well as my motor shaft. I actually gave my motor some power so it would lock in and I ground a flat on it so that and I and also ground, ground a flat on the threads here for this this lock nut here because it's got a uh, set screw. Let me see if I can locate it. Oh, it's right there in front, right? Now it's, it's top dead center right now. There's a, a set screw in there that goes down and lock, locks this set screw from backing off. So I filed a flat. I timed it out. I locked it all, put, assembled it all together, and then put a mark on the shaft where the flat should be. And then filed the flat on there, as well as the one for this set screw and the one for this set screw and that gives the set screw a flat place to set against and it's not likely to slip so that's just general kind of assembly tips 
Um, what else? Oh, yeah. Another thing is this, uh, this particular ball screw was loose. The nut was loose. This, this nut here was loose. You could actually take it, a hold of it, and go a little bit like this with it. And when I first assembled this, it made it vibrate, which is totally undesirable, right? Now, I haven't uh, taken it apart. I was going to take this out and put, I have two of them, so I was going to put the other one in. But then I, uh, I thought, well, what if I just put a gap at one end of the, the plate that, you know, the mounting plate, what if I just torqued it at an angle, so I put it in a bind, not too much of a bind, but just enough of a, of a bind that, like you see, there's a gap down there, and it's tight down here. And that basically took that nut, and it just went like that with it. Now it's always riding on that little bit of a bind, and it doesn't vibrate. When it was in where it's supposed to be, it was just, you know, it was shaking because it wasn't tight. But it, now it's tight because it's in a bind. So that's not proper, but it's a uh, redneck fix. Uh, as you can see, I just uh, timed everything out, you know, uh, measured everything for the width and, and you know, everything I needed. Uh, and that's, you know, you don't need a screw all the way to the other end. It's... You only need a screw for the travel, basically, of whatever this is, plus whatever this is, is all you need. Plus your your ball nut and these ends. <laughs> uh, what else? Uh, yeah. The, another thing that's... I added a fan... I had to notch out for it. So hindsight uh, would have made an allowance for that fan to help keep the motor cool. And I know if you design it right, you don't need fans, so whatever. But this is my first machine, and I didn't design it right, so I need fans. Um... You want to think about, it's hard to think about all where you, how you're going to wire things up front, you know, from the start. You know, in my mind, I couldn't really see the whole picture, so I just thought, well, I'll make it work. And uh, you can see up here, I, I, luckily somebody gave me these little terminals, which are nice, really nice. So you can, if I ever need to work on it, I, I can unscrew it and just take it apart and rewire it, whatever. But, you know, this was an afterthought, of course. But it works out. The uh, You can see the, the, the wire. I'm really close to my limit switch. That's about all the travel this direction. So you're, I'm stretched out about as far as it'll go. And if you look at this one, it's, what do I have? Uh, oh, four inches there. So if I went another four inches, you can see that that wire is, you know, not too tight, but it's it's not all, you know, it's as long as it needs to be, plus a little. And if you come all the way this way, how much slack do you get? That's as far as it'll go. And you can see it just bunches up. It kind of takes a little twist. When it's when it's over there, it kind of like pulls this way a little bit. But as it comes this way, it kind of rolls. So you got to allow for some movement. You know. But that last afterthought, this is, you know, pretty, pretty redneck. That's pretty redneck. But that's the way it goes. You can see... You don't really need any more than that. I got a little bungee cord just to kind of keep it from dragging off the table. But, uh, just kind of goes in a loop. 
Not too bad. It's about the tr full travel of it. I guess that's it for the x-axis. I can't think of anything else. Nothing somebody else would have... You know, there's nothing tricky about it. It's just a matter of planning. So, next one, next stop, z-axis. Thanks.